Currently in the seventh universe, more precisely on a planet light years from planet Earth, it was possible to see people who were living their lives in a peaceful way. Until a red portal appeared in the middle of the sky, making everyone in that city look to the sky where that portal was. It didn't take long for two hooded beings to come out of that portal, and then they lowered their hoods and looked at all those beings below them who stared at them curious about who those beings were. But soon one of the hooded ones, who was taller than his companion, pointed out his finger towards the city, and then several key attacks began to be fired against the city. These attacks generated several explosions that brought down several buildings. Many beings on this planet ended up dying from the key attacks or from the buildings that were being destroyed by the being hooded man who showed no remorse in doing all that. Screams of pain, agony, and sadness were emitted by the residents of that place. Something that made the hooded being laugh at the pain of those beings, and after short minutes the city had practically become dust, and there was no longer any living being in that place, as the hooded being had eliminated one by one with their own hands. Regardless of gender or age, everyone lost their lives in that place. And with that, the city was in ruins, and there was no living being other than the two hooded men who just laughed. The small hooded being said, This planet does not have enough resources to serve as the base for my race, so I will have to continue looking for planets with good resources and races strong enough to be useful to us, but not enough to oppose us. Until then, I will have to kill all living beings to increase my power and destroy their planets, as a useless planet should not remain in the future of the demonic universe that I and my race seek spoke the hooded being while looking around and smiling evilly when seeing what he had done at that moment. Soon that small being created a new red portal on his back and entered it with his taller companion. But before that, the small being left a sphere of dark red energy fall to the ground. Such a sphere of energy began to destroy everything around it and cross the ground at an extreme speed. And in a few minutes, it reached the core of the planet. And the moment the sphere reached the core of the planet, it collapsed and began to self-destruct. And in a matter of a few minutes, the planet exploded, destroying everything on it. And from afar, the hooded being smiled at the sight of such a scene that in his vision was beautiful. The tall hooded being said, Minus one. Now let's move on to the next one, as I still want to find those Saiyans called Son Goku and Vegeta, as I have to avenge the death of my brothers who were eliminated by them in the past. I couldn't with them at that time, but now I'm here and I will avenge the death of my brothers. And that is something I promise you, my brothers. The tall hooded being spoke as he clenched his fists and ground his teeth in pure anger towards the death of his brothers. After completing their objective in that place, the two beings went to other planets where they destroyed some in the same way because these planets were not good enough for the two hooded beings. But among these planets, they found some with a large amount of resources and that had some people with a good level of power who would serve very well as servants or slaves for his race in the future. And with that, he did not destroy them, but rather subjugated the beings on those planets, making these beings his servants, and in the future, servants of his race. Now on planet Earth. Currently on planet Earth, it was possible to see Son Goku and Vegeta training together while some people were observing the battle, and this included Shin, the Kaioshin, who was just there to observe the two Saiyans who were facing each other. This was already quite normal for them and the people closest to the two Saiyans. Shin said, are Goku and Vegeta training every day in this intense way? Shin asked Bulma, who was sitting eating something, while she looked at her childhood friend and her husband who were fighting each other. Bulma said, Yes, it would be strange if they weren't training at this time. Goku and Vegeta just don't train when there's a party or something like that going on, but they still manage to train somehow. Goku and Vegeta just don't train when Chi Chi and I are with them. Then these two Saiyans stay quiet, but when we're not close, they're training. Bulma said, looking slightly at the Kaioshin, and then she looked back at Son Goku and Vegeta. Goku and Vegeta, who were training, finally stopped their training to eat a little. Then the two approached and sat down and started eating. At that moment, Goku realized that Shin was in that place, which left him surprised and confused. Goku said, Shin, what are you doing here? Goku asked while looking at the Kaioshin, who was surprised that Goku realized that he was just there at that moment. Shin said, I came to warn you that apparently there are two beings that are destroying and enslaving the planets they pass through, and from what I managed to find out, they are after you and Mr. Vegeta. 
so I think they are doing this to attract the attention of both of you for some reason," Shin said, leaving everyone surprised by that. After all, the only one who could do this would be Frieza, who wouldn't do it using a disguise or something similar. Vegeta said, It's definitely not Frieza. If it were him, he would have personally come, or with his group to try to eliminate us. So it must be someone else, but I don't know who that person could be. After all, I don't remember making anyone angry. But the chances of him not liking Kakarot are high, since he's insufferable sometimes because of his idiocy," said the Saiyan Prince while looking at Goku who just ignored him and went back to eating his food. Goku said, Since they're after us, then we just wait for them to come after us. Then we defeat them and that's it, said the Saiyan in a carefree way, and what Goku said even made sense. Shin said, If it were that easy, I would like you to come with me after these beings. Shin said while looking at the two Saiyans who stopped eating for a moment. Vegeta said, And why would we do that? After all, just like Kakarot said, we should wait for them to come after us. Then Kakarot and I will defeat these hooded beings and that's it, said the Saiyan prince while looking at the Kaioshin who just sighed. Shin said, We need to go after these beings because they are destroying the planets and this is damaging the balance of the universe and this affects the entire universe. And according to Mr. Beerus, as these two beings are after you two, you should resolve this. And according to Whis, all the deaths are the two of your faults. Shin said while looking at the Saiyans who sighed and stood up. Vegeta said, okay, let's get this over with. The Saiyan Prince spoke. And then he, Goku and Shin flew out of that place in search of finding those responsible for the destruction of the planets. In the seventh universe. Currently in the seventh universe, it was possible to see Son Goku, Vegeta, and Shin flying around the universe until the trio arrived on a planet that had a strange aura. Shin was in shock when he felt the aura of that planet. Shin felt a slight fear because he thought that this aura was from the being behind Goku and Vegeta. Shin thought, They're this evil energy. No, they are sealed in the demon realm, the Makai world. And those who were responsible for sealing them were the Kaioshans of the past who came together and sealed them. So it is impossible that they returned after so many years. And if the seal were broken, Supreme Kai and I would be the first to know about it, which makes it impossible for them to have freed themselves, unless it wasn't all of them, but two beings who freed themselves and are now planning to break the seal of the Makai world. But to do so, I need to be sure who they really are, thought the Kaioshin, worried about the possible enemy that could threaten all the Kaioshins and the beings of the seventh universe. Vegeta said, this must be one of the planets conquered by those two beings that are after me. And Kakarot, I must say that this planet has a strange evil energy, said the Saiyan Prince while looking at the planet that had an evil energy very different from what he had ever felt before. Goku said, Yes, this evil energy is much stronger than normal. This evil energy reminds me of the energy that Dabura had, but this one is stronger than his and different in some aspects, so it couldn't be Dabura, but a member of his race or something similar, right? said the Saiyan looking at Shin as well as Vegeta, who was also looking at Shin. Shin said, Dabura is the demon that ended up not being sealed in the Makai world in the past. And before you ask me, the Makai world is the world of demons, an ancient and destructive race that was sealed thousands of years ago, even before the Supreme Lord Kaio was sealed in the Z sword. And from what Supreme Lord Kaio told me, he was part of the group that sealed all or most of the demons, and those who were not sealed were eliminated by the Kaioshins. Dabura was the only one who stayed alive somehow together with some other low-level demons, but none of them should have such great evil energy. Maybe Majin Buu, but he's no longer evil, Shin said while looking at the planet and feeling the large amount of evil energy that was coming from his planet. Goku said, So what do we do now? We came to defeat the two beings that are after me and Vegeta, but we don't even know who they are or what they look like, and the entire planet has this evil energy. We can't tell who is who among them," said the Saiyan without knowing who his enemies were. After all, Goku didn't know the face or name of either of them. Vegeta said, We can enter the planet and go after the two beings that have the strongest evil energy, because if they dominated all the beings on this planet, they must be very strong. So just enter the planet and defeat the two strongest and that's it said the Saiyan Prince while looking at the planet that reminded him of his time as a planet conqueror when he was still one of Frieza's servants. Shin said, I don't think it will be necessary to go after him because they are coming after us, said the Kaioshin while pointing his finger behind them. When a portal appeared and two beings emerged from it, 
one tall and one short, who had something similar to a cane. The small hooded being said, It seems that you have come after us without us needing to come to you, so we thank you for coming to us and saving us from going after you two, said the small hooded being who was smiling while looking at Goku and Vegeta, but soon looked at Shin and felt great anger towards Shin because he was a Kaioshin. Shin said, you are demons from the Makai world. How did you manage to get out of the demon world? Since it is sealed, it should be impossible for you to get out of there. Shin said, surprised and irritated at the same time. After all, he knew that those beings were really demons from the Makai world, the world of demons. The tall hooded being spoke, we left the Makai world thanks to the help of our king and the help of my brothers who prepared our arrival. And that is why we are after you two, because we are both the brothers of Dabura and Akuman. And we came after you two specifically for revenge, because you are responsible for the death of our brothers. And that is why you will die. The tall hooded being spoke in a tone of fury as he looked at both Saiyans, mainly at Goku, who faced Dabura and Akuman. Goku had been solely responsible for Akuman's death when he was a young child. Goku said, Dabura is a demon that served Babidi in the past. He was defeated by Majin Buu, and not by me or Vegeta. As for this Akuman guy, I have no idea who he is, said the Saiyan while trying to remember the demon Akuman, but even though he tried, Goku couldn't remember. The tall hooded being spoke, You should remember, because you're responsible for his death when you were still a child. But that doesn't matter anymore. Akumo and my brother Lord Makai are going to finish off you two, and then we're going to kill this damned Kaioshin and everyone who gets in our way. The tall hooded being spoke and then raised his demonic energy as well as his ally, causing a large amount of evil demonic energy to emerge. Goku and Vegeta upon seeing that, both Saiyans transformed into Super Saiyan and advanced towards the two demons. Goku began to fight against Akumo and Vegeta began to fight against Lord Makai. Goku and Akumo started a duel between themselves, where Goku struck his opponent at high speed, hitting the base of the demon's abdomen, which barely had time to react. But the moment Akumo saw an opening, he threw a powerful punch at Goku, which he felt, his jaw dislocated. Goku thought Akumo isn't fast, but he's really resilient and strong, so I'll have to be faster and not give him time to react to my blows. Goku thought, and with that he transformed into Super Saiyan 2, becoming even faster than before, starting a sequence of blows on his opponent who was no longer having time to react. Akumo couldn't even blink before receiving another blow. Goku began to land a sequence of blows on the demon that made Akumo very injured, and to finish that fight, Goku hit a Kamehameha at point-blank range, making the demon very injured. Smoke ended up coming out of Akumo's wounds. Vegeta, who was fighting against Lord Makai, managed to defend himself from his attacks that were fast, but didn't have much strength. So Vegeta waited until a gap opened, and when it opened, Vegeta landed a precise blow on the demon, who spat out some blood. Vegeta thought, Lord Makai is fast, but he's not strong or resilient, so I have to attack with everything at once. Vegeta thought, and with that he transformed into Super Saiyan 2, and started attacking the demon with everything, hitting him with force and brutality. And with a powerful blow, Vegeta made Lord Makai fly and then collide with Akumo. Lord Makai said, It seems that they are too strong for both of us at the moment, brother. But I know a way to make our lives easier, so that we can defeat those two Saiyans in a very easy way. Lord Makai spoke softly to his brother, who was panting thanks to the blows he had received. Akumo said, Well, it's better to lose today's battle and win tomorrow's war. So let's get out of here before we are eliminated like our brothers were. Akumo spoke, and then a portal appeared behind him. And upon seeing that, Goku and Vegeta advanced toward them. But both demons entered the portal and managed to escape the two Saiyans. Shin said, Damn, the demons escaped! Shin said irritated, as he could no longer feel the presence of the two demons in that place. Vegeta said, Well, now we know what these demons look like, and why they're after us. Let's return to planet Earth and use the Dragon Balls to track down Akumo and Lord Makai. And with that, we will be able to eliminate these two demons at once. And after we do this, you can clean up the mess they made, Shin, because that's not our responsibility, said the Prince of Saiyans returning to his base form, as did Goku. Shin said, Okay, let's go to Earth and then defeat the demons, said the Kaioshin while looking at the two Saiyans who nodded in agreement. And then all three began to head towards planet Earth, arriving in a few hours. Upon arriving on planet Earth, Goku and Vegeta began talking to Bulma and the others who were present, which in this case were almost all the Z-Warriors. 
Suddenly, everyone was surprised to see the sky close and become dark. And then Shenron appeared in the sky. That left everyone surprised because none of them had summoned Shenron. Suddenly, everyone present in that place began to shine, and after a few seconds, everyone was smaller, with their appearance and size as when they were children, which showed that Shenron's power had made the beings on Earth younger and weaker. Bulma said, We, we became children, said the little blue-haired girl, in complete shock at seeing that she and her friends, and even her husband, had become children. With that, we end today's video. If you want to see the continuation of this incredible story, leave a lot of likes in the video and comment. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you another day, guys.